Hey guys, welcome back to Civil Learning Online. And today in this video, I am gonna describe an expression for the crippling load when both end of the column are hinged. So without any further delay, let's get started. So guys, continuing our discussion about the calculation or the driving an expression for the crippling load, we I would like to first let you know that there are two types of column. First one is the short column and the second one is the long column. Failure of the short column takes place due to crossing and failure of the long column takes place by buckling. And the crippling load are those load uh, when the col long column bends or the failure of the long column takes place at that load, uh, at such load, that load is called crippling load. So there are four uh, in four type of end condition for the long column and the general expression for the crippling load or the load carrying capacity of the column is given by pi square e of ei upon l effective square and the value of l effective is depends upon the end condition of each and every column and uh, due to that effective length the expression for calculating the crippling load in each and every end condition varies as, uh, as per the effective length and here we have a end condition that both the end of the column are hinged means uh, both the end are hinged we will need to calculate the crippling load pi square ei upon l square and in this video i will show you how to derive this expression and uh, here the diagram we we have all i have already clearly shown the diagram here see here we have a column a b which is buckled due to the crippling load p along the is uh, along the section a c b so now uh, uh, if this question comes in exam then we have to write uh, some language begin with language to get the full marks so i am going to first show you how to write some language we need to simply write down uh, what we have done shown in this diagram that will be our language and further after writing that we will proceed with the uh, dry derivation of this uh, value or sorry expression for the crippling load so i am going to write down here we need to consider consider a section section at distance distance x from support A and let at support at distance x from support A here deflection be y y equals to deflection deflection at section so what I have written here support the, uh, i have already told you that we have a column ab which is deflected along the section acb due to the crippling load p which is acting at the support on the uh, at point b and the same load is reacting from the support a and due to that load the it is long column so it is deflecting uh, along the section acb and we have considered a section at distance x from support a and uh, and at section x the deflection is y now uh, we need to we need to know have a concept about the sign convention while deriving the expression for the crippling load so i am going to show you here what are the sign conventions so guys on discussing about the deflection if we discuss about the deflection of the long column then it takes place in two forms either it is uh, convex or it is concave so if it is convex then moment generated will be positive and if it is concave then the moment generated will be negative so now we have come to know about the sign convention for the uh, moment due to the deflection uh, and now uh, here due to this crippling load p the deflection is y so moment will be equals to uh, force sorry perpendicular force force multiplied by the perpendicular distance this p 
will be at right angle at this deflection y so moment will be equals to moment moment at that section at section equals to p multiplied by y now we have we need to write a line here we have moment m equals to e i multiply by d square y upon dx square this is our deflection equation and here the deflection is concave so our moment will be negative so minus m times e i times d square y upon dx square will be our first equation for derivation now we have the value of m equals to p multiply by y and here it is convex so we will write here minus sign and moment is negative so minus p y equals to e i multiply by d square y upon dx square one thing more guys do not get confused listen see this carefully we have the moment at the section in this column at its distance x from the support a is y, uh, p multiplied by y and the deflected shape is concave so it is negative p y and the expression for the deflection equation in this condition in the condition for the end column of both of the end of both if the both end of the column is hinged we have minus m equals to e i times d square y by dx square and the here the moment is negative and we have got that the moment is minus p y so here it will be minus p y equals to e i times d square y by dx square now what we need to do is bring this portion in this side so we will have e i times d square y upon dx square plus p y equals to 0 this is our equation 2 now again what we need to do is we have to remove this e i from this differential equation so we will have here d square y upon dx square plus p upon e i multiply by y equals to 0 if we if you ask me that how the we got this expression then see here what i have done here i have divided on both side divide on both side use by e i dividing on both side dividing on both side with e i because we do not need e i with this differential term so what I, I have done here i have divided all the expression with e i so here we will have e i upon e i multiply by d square y upon dx square plus p y upon e i equals to 0 upon e i so if we solve this we will get this e i e i gets cancelled so d square y upon dx square p by e i multiply by y and uh, 0 by something is equal to 0 so we have got this this is our equation second not this this is our equation second so guys here uh, if you are in uh, basically the we one need to study these uh, these things means uh, this is the part portion of the uh, mechanics of solid and we study this in third semester so we have a mathematics in which we know how to how to find the general equation of such derivative so here the general equation of this equa uh, this derivative portion is going to be i am going to write here the general solution general solution of above equation is y equals to a multiply by cos x multiply by root under p by e i plus b times sin x multiply by root under p by e i and this is going to be our equation 3 and here a and b are the constants 
if you know how to derive this uh, you might have studied this in mathematics engineering mathematics how to get the general solution of this equation if not then you can uh, leave a comment in this video i will try to upload that uh, how to show you how to find this general equation of such equation i will show you in that video so for for now we proceed with uh, this expression only so we have uh, in this in this column we will have two end condition first one is here we have x equals to 0 y equals to 0 and here when x will be equals to l x will be equals to l then also y is equal to 0 here here x is our span of this column length of the column while y is the deflection so at support a deflection is 0 and uh, distance is also 0 so x is 0 y is 0 similarly if our x becomes l this is these are our boundary conditions so if our x becomes l again here we will have deflection equals to 0 so y is 0 here so i'm going we will have here two boundary conditions that are boundary conditions we have two boundary condition first one is x equals to 0 y equals to 0 and the second one is x equals to l y equals to 0 now we will apply these two boundary conditions in this equation and we will find the further solution so now i have rewritten this is our equation 3 which i have recently shown you which was a general general solution of that derivative portion and guys if you uh, if you don't understand how that the general equation comes then you need to leave a comment or you can remember this uh, for the particular uh, beam section because uh, when we proceed with our lectures then you will come to know that only some portion will be added up and further everything will be uh, same so you can simply remember this uh, general solution of the uh, for finding the uh, crippling load value for different in conditions so applying x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 in this equation if we put x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 then from here we will have we have y equals to 0 so 0 will be equals to a multiply by cos 0 will be hello equals to 1 so cos 0 degree this 0 is if we put x equals to 0 here then this whole portion this theta portion will become 0 so cos 0 degree plus b sine 0 degree now on solving this we will get 0 equals to a cos 0 cos 0 means uh, 1 so we will have a equals to 0 and this much portion will be 0 now we have got that a is equal to 0 now since we have got a is equals to 0 when a multiply this whole portion then uh, we will have y equals to b sin x root under p by ei so i am going to write here y equals to b sin x multiply by root under p upon ei let this be equation 4 and you know how this equation 4 we have got that uh, if we were first we applied boundary condition x equals to 0 y equals to 0 then we got a is equal to 0 then again if we put a equals to 0 in this equation 3 we got y equals to b sin x times root under pi and it was our equation 4 now in this equation we will uh, apply the second boundary condition that is x equals to l and y equals to 0 then from here we will have 0 equals to b sin l multiply by root under p upon ei now guys from here if uh, this if we bring this zero b value here then we will have sin l times root under p upon ei equals to zero because zero divided by something will be zero now uh, we need to know if uh, you must be knowing that the you need to know that at what value of theta sine theta will be 0 so we know that sine 0 degree is equal to 0 and similarly sine 180 degree equals to 0 means uh, multi at multiple of pi sine theta will be 0 so we know that since sine 0 degree sine pi sine 2 pi sine 3 pi means multiple of pi all the value will be equals to 0 so from here we will write here 
sin l times root under p by e i equals to 0 so we will have here sin l multiply by root under p by e i equals to pi now you may have a question that uh, why i if sin theta value is 0 at 0 degree also at and at 180 degree that is pi also then why i didn't put 0 here and why i put pi so see here guys this is our crippling load p crippling load cannot be 0 we all know that there must be some load so that our column will buckle so if we put here 0 it means if we put sin uh, l times root under p by e i equals to sin in, in place of pi if we put 0 here then what we will have l times root under p by e i equals to 0 because this this sign uh, will be if we bring the sign here then sign inverse sign 0 means l by root under pi will be equals to 0 that is not possible upper crippling load cannot be 0 so we need to take a high, little higher value that is pi so from here we will get l times root under p upon e i equals to pi now squaring on both side uh, we will have p upon e i equals to pi square upon l square so from here we will have p equals to pi square e i upon l square right here squaring on both side it will be more clear to the examiner that you know these simple things and they want to deduct mark so this is our what this is the final equation which we which is the equation for calculating the value of crippling load when our both end is hinged and do like and subscribe this channel and do not miss any updates in the upcoming video i will bring uh, the video about how to calculate the expression for the crippling load when our both end of the column are one end of the column is fixed another end is free uh, so stay tuned with this, this channel